So Shane Balcom is my name, and I've been working in what I would call sort of hyper growth startup space now for about 15, 16 years. You know, typically I would classify myself as an executor. When David first contacted you regarding the opportunity at Rossman Architecture, he referred to you as a, uh, a, a rainmaker and a unicorn. But your first reaction was, this opportunity really didn't make much sense to you. It was small. You know, my, my last firm was about 30 million top line with the idea of growing to 100. And, you know, the, the last several positions I've had were companies that were north of eight figures, nine figures. And, uh, you know, Rossman's a, a pretty small company, early stage company. and. You know, I'm glad David stuck with me on it and explained it better, but it was, you know, it t- turned out to be a really cool opportunity, as you know, in the end. And obviously I took the job. I would never have seen or applied for this job on my own. Well, let's, let's dive into this a little bit deeper, Shane. Tell us uh, about the process that David and Anita ran in introducing you to Rossman's and getting you initially at least interested in exploring the opportunity. You know, the first phone call that David and I had, uh, you know, he, he predicated, I, he, I think he knew before he even opened his mouth that my first instinct was going to be this isn't a fit. So he, he started by basically telling me that this is going to be outside the box. I need you to listen. I want you to, you know, hear me out and, and at least meet the CEO. And, you know, by doing that, he, he kind of put me in on my back foot and and I I love the approach because if he would have just come out and said we're looking for a rainmaker or a biz dev uh, senior biz dev guy at an architect firm I would have said good luck Uh, not me but you know he he predicated it all he framed it really really well and the thing he did that I loved is he made it more about the human variable you know, I think you'll be a good fit for them. It's husband and wife. They're very humble. You know, in the end, one of the things that I, I really do for the, the Rossmans is, is mentor them. And, and I love that. And David knows that I, I really enjoy having that aspect in my professional life. So, the, the, again, the fit. I think David understood the fit, knowing me a little bit and, and knowing his clients well. And, you know, back to the... Perry Martel group in general, that includes David and Anita. I I like their process and typically don't like recruiters. They're they're very human about their process. They they think a lot about, you know, the the moral fit, you know, the moral foundation of the people they're putting together, not just CVs, not just skill sets. And, you know, after 35 years, they, they both really do understand that the innate often can can circumnavigate and be much more impactful than than what you might see on a cv and you know that for for sure you know that that uh, respect i have for them really helped me get to the next step if it was a recruiter i never spoke to before i never get to the next step you know the, the fact that i did have some history with david and, and have a lot of respect for him have read some of his books have referred people to him in the past th- those things helped a lot you know david's been a bit of a mentor a bit of a go-to resource for me in the last seven or eight years just when it comes to me having questions had nothing to do with using his services nothing to do with uh you know needing a job it, it's just i respect his opinion i respect his experience when it comes to you know, understand, understanding our space. So that, that helped a ton. I really do consider David an SME in, in the space. And I don't say that about, I don't think any other recruiter. So that, that's a big deal for me. And, uh, you know, back to more specifically around the question, clearly I'm sitting here today. So he was correct. His gut was correct. And the process they ended up running afterwards was, uh, you know, an incredible process. Back to how David framed it up as a rainmaker and how unique it was at Unicorn. He, he was right on. Like, this is a pretty unique position that's going to take a pretty unique person to to do right. One of the things, you know, that I, I asked Eric when we originally got together and talked about doing this interview had to do with David's inside out process, right? Which is extremely detailed and very in-depth and 
the whole process of going through and hiring someone. And I asked Eric, I said, you know, is this something that now you are going to incorporate in your hiring process? And he said, you know, um, if I need to do a hiring at the executive level, I'm going back to David because I'm not a brain surgeon. This isn't what I do for a living. And I found that really fascinating, you know, back to this whole thing um, that we were talking about is the humility and the lack of ego that seems to exist in, in that uh, culture that you are now part of. Yep. You know, the human DNA that connects the three of us is built on a foundation like that. And I, I really do believe that, that if they engage with the wrong executive recruiter, they probably would have got somebody skilled enough to pull off the job. But I don't know if they would have got the the DNA match that that David and Nita were, were were very concerned about, very very open and articulated it very well. And and that's the difference with the process that they run. And I think David and Anita knew by putting me in here, I'd be very aware of that type of stuff. But I don't think that's that's common. I don't think a lot of people would walk into a VP of sales role with with that as part of their agenda. I think that's a very subtle thing, but I do think it's right near the top of the list on, on importance when when matchmaking in this type of a you know a company this type of a role, and and that's more than anything that's where my hats off to the way David and Anita run their process. They actually care about the humans involved in the process, and they actually get the ROI. So, you know, to take away some of the, the the fluff around it, it's because they get that satisfaction, ROI, you know, long-term success is all going to increase if they pay attention to this. And I, I don't think a lot of recruiters ever paid a second thought, humbly. And I've used recruiters in, in three, four different countries. The... The neat thing about recruiters, the thing I would tell anybody if they're going to engage with a recruiter, make sure you know, some of the things we touched on are part of the process. Don't make sure the human variables considered here. Make sure it's not too plug and play and too binary and too sterile. You know, anybody can do scrapes nowadays on LinkedIn and find CVs and start throwing spaghetti on the wall. I've seen very few that are willing to take the time and have the passion to also connect, you know, the right people. And, and, and that's a big deal. Connecting the right CV to the right, you know, gap is one thing. Connecting the right people is a, a really interesting, subtle skill. And, you know, back to humility and stuff. You know, Perry Montel is just got bag fulls of that as well. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's just a nice way to do things.